Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be tackling a mystery of our solar system. Specifically, why is it that the planets in our solar system have such different compositions? Welcome to What the Math. Now, when you look at various planets in our solar system, you may quickly realize how different they look, but what you may not realize is how different the insides of those planets are as well. Even the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, are very different from each other in what's on the inside. For example, Mercury has a lot of iron. Venus, on the other hand, has a lot less iron in comparison to its silicates. Mars is really really small and also has very low density and Earth seems to have the tremendously large amount of mass and also density compared to all three other objects. Same can be said of Jupiter and Saturn but the idea here is that the composition of the planets is very different. Now this was not really well understood but a recent study from University of Copenhagen actually tries to tackle this using, well, geology. They looked at uh, various uh, meteorites found across our planet that came from various objects, such as, for example, Mars, and also uh, even from the asteroid belt. Several asteroids were collected from an asteroid known as Vesta, and they studied the calcium isotope composition of several meteorites called angrites and uraeolites. And what they discovered is that the uh, ratio of isotopes in samples correlated directly with the masses of their parent planets and asteroids. Or in other words, what they discovered was that a lot of planets stopped growing at different times. The protoplanets all grew at the same rate, basically they all increased in mass relatively identically, but some of them stopped growing earlier, such as, for example, Mars and Mercury. Others grew much longer, such as Earth. But why is it that their composition is different? Well, this actually suggests that our solar system received more material from the outside, most likely from nearby supernova, as the time went by. So, by the time Mercury finished growing, more material may have come to our solar system, but was actually absorbed by Earth. And similarly, a lot of material was absorbed by larger planets like Jupiter and Saturn. In other words, a smaller planet most likely ceased growing early on, probably indicating that this was one of the oldest planets in the solar system, while larger planets grew much, much, much longer and thus are most likely the youngest planet in our solar system, which makes Earth the youngest terrestrial planet. So just to summarize, what have we learned from this particular study? Well, it seems that our solar system was actually developing throughout possibly several millions or even hundreds of millions of years, and throughout that time it actually received more and more material from the outside, more likely from the supernova, but possibly also just from the gas nearby. As this gas arrived to our solar system, various planets started absorbing it, but those planets that were smaller or that kind of finished accreting their mass have actually received almost nothing. The newer gas and newer materials most likely ended up in planets that are most massive today. This also means that a lot of this material that came later on was actually very different from material that was there in the beginning, and this would explain why planets are so different in their composition. So this study is actually very unusual and very interesting in that it presents the growth of solar system as this dynamic and very long process where planets were still growing even millions of years after some of the planets already stopped growing. This is very interesting and definitely requires more follow-up studies. For now though, that's all I wanted to mention in this video and hopefully now you know why the planets in our solar system are somewhat different in composition. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and make sure to come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye bye.